Hi, welcome to my YouTube. This is my latest edition. You don't see one of these on my channel too often. This is the first bolt action on my channel, and it's not that I dislike bolt action rifles. I just find the military semi more interesting. Matter of fact, I used to own a Remington 700P over a decade ago, but because of downsizing and moving to a condo, I sold it. I regret selling it. I bet you the whole time I've been talking, you've been staring and saying to yourself, what's with the camel? It was done by the previous owner. It didn't look so bad in the pictures, and I thought to myself, I'll shoot it for a while and then eventually change it. But when it arrived, it looked worse. Wrong paint. I think he used automotive paint. Very shiny and poor preparation. The paint is peeling off all over the place. And if that's not bad enough, he gouged the $1,000 stock right into the fiberglass. What the heck? In any case, if I have to correct someone else's mistake, then it's going to take me twice as long. So why don't we get started? Okay, yesterday I spent an hour to an hour and a half removing the paint from here to here. And I've forgotten how strong the acetone was. And boy, I was getting rather high. And um, so I decided to stop to show you what the before looks like and then what's after. So this was below that and the acetone was not able to easily remove this. So, but I don't know who did this. Uh, I would not think it's uh, original to the stock. But um, I would say about 95% of the paint was e easily removed, except for like in the cavities in here. Uh, and in here, this texture grip, you can see that the paint is still there. And it's easily removed by using a toothpick or a plastic uh, pick and you just basically dig it out. You, you see that? It's coming out like that. Yeah. So basically you just keep digging every little pieces out. A lot of work, but you have to do it like that. So you just peel out. Now I've, I've tried using uh, cloth. I've done it about four or five times and it wouldn't come out anymore. So. You have to resort to picking. Okay, so um, I'm going to also show you briefly because I'm in my office. I don't want to do this uh, for an extended period. So I'm just going to show you how I applied the the chemical acetone and and I put it in a jar. For this amount of paint removal, I'm going to be basically putting about an inch into a jar of the size. I'm going to use a brush like this. And you just basically tap the inside and of course I'm trying to protect my uh, my mat and you just apply it like this and already I can smell the fumes okay and you gotta wait I would say several minutes For the acetone to soften up the paint before you start using a cloth to okay just let it sit there for about a few minutes I have a clean cloth in the hand and you can already see the paint start to bubble Okay, and use a clean cloth and start wiping it. You see that? See, it's just falling off. 
basically that's what you do some um, some colors that the previous owner used the brown was a little harder to remove but it does come off the green and the gray came off pretty good and basically that's that's how you do it see this uh, peeled off this part peeled off pretty good you just uh, okay so I'm gonna do the rest uh, outdoors and I'll I'll be back it took me 45 minutes to remove the remainder of the paint and another 45 minutes to an hour to pick at the cavities and the texture grip and the texture handguard so this is the result a little bit better than before but not by much so I still have to do a redo now use a flashlight go over it very carefully to see if there's any uh, cracks or damages for me all I had was this gouge uh, I can feel it but not deep enough to fill it so I'm gonna use a 400 grit paper and just feather the uh, edges and uh, also the uh, question regarding whether this camo is original to the stock and now I'm leaning more that uh, it is uh, the first um, Evidence was this camo was difficult to remove with uh, acetone and the second one is when I removed the bipod rail I can see the paint extended into the slot now most people who do a redo would not be removing the rail all they would do is mask it out and then you know that's why that was also another hint that this might be original uh, to the uh, stock but like you know, I don't particularly like the white here so I'm gonna have to do a redo now which way I'm gonna go I could go the easiest way and that's just to paint um, the white uh, into a brown or a green um, I could use uh, foliage is very popular you can use grass you can use leaf and use a reverse stencil and spray paint and cover the white that way too but I'm more leaning towards something more difficult and that is digital and uh, that's what I think I'm gonna be doing so stay tuned okay, I'm gonna show you how to make a stencil out of vinyl sheet now I prefer vinyl sheet over paper is because paper absorb paint and a corner tend to curl uh, also uh, vinyl is easy to clean I could use it over and over again and also for every sheet I make I get two pattern by flipping it upside down okay there is one disadvantage of having vinyl is because it's stiffer than paper and when you have a pattern like this and you bend this over the stock that little piece will tend to stick up but I have a solution for that and uh, what I do is that uh, I make for every color I have two sheets one deals with the larger pattern and the other uh, sheet deals with the smaller cutouts that is added later. Um, this pattern has three colors. The tan is the khaki color, is the base color, and then the secondary color is the green and the black. So I'm going to show you how to make a stencil as an example, just a black right now. And then I'll show you how to uh, cut out the, the smaller pieces and um, like most people they either do a positive stencil or a negative stencil uh, for me I'm gonna show you how to do both okay so why don't we begin we begin with a pattern off the internet I printed out and a loose leaf uh, folder binder if you call it and you tape this to the inside like this Just make sure it's exactly lined up and it is and like that okay now this the, the pattern is just a guide I'm not actually following it because it has too many of these little little cutouts and a little bit sticking out so it's just like a guide and and this is what I mean um, like for this for this part I'm just gonna go like straight across like this 
okay matter of fact I might even go all the way across this way I'm gonna go this way and then I'm gonna go gonna follow a pattern like this okay so you see what I mean I did not actually even follow that pattern okay uh, now you're gonna say well what about that area well I'll deal with that area later and all these little smaller uh, cutouts and uh, indents uh, they will all be handled uh, at a later when I use a different stencil and I'm also gonna be using a, uh, a positive stencil what I'm making right now is a negative stencil okay I'm gonna show you what, what I do with this one okay that's what the second one looks like and the third one I have a whole bunch of smaller ones over here I'm gonna kind of combine them together and um, I don't want to be too close to the bigger one so I'm gonna go like this maybe and like this and I'm gonna go like this and uh, go like this Okay, so that's then I'm done. Okay, less angles is easy for me to cut it. Okay, the next uh, stencil I'm going to be doing would be the uh, the smaller patterns, the little tiny squares, you know, and they're all dotted all over the place, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, I'm not quite finished with the smaller pattern. The smaller patterns on this side and the bigger pattern on this side. I'm gonna now separate the two from this uh, folder and just simply just run a blade like that. Like that, just throw this out. And now I can actually put the bigger one and that's the pattern that fits there and this is black one black two black two is the smaller ones and now I'm gonna deal with uh, these little things that I mentioned earlier and to do that I'm gonna now add them in um, I see there's a, a square there I'm gonna put that square right here and there's one right here so I'm gonna add that here so that should take care of that and there's another one right here okay if I had these little smaller one on the black one it would have weakened the whole structure and I don't want to do that and here now I put another one here and I put another one here and I can do one like this okay and uh, where else? Uh, oh, there's one right here. The square. I'll put that there. And there is basically. Uh, that's about. That's about it. Oh, I can. There's another one. Small one here. I could do. And um, so that's how I take care of these. These little. These little things by adding it on to um, on the second stencil and so I think that's generally that's it 
So I'm going to cut them out uh, with a razor blade. Make sure it's a nice sharp razor blade. And then I'll be back. Okay, I've done uh, three of the four. So I'm just going to do the fourth and using a very sharp razor on a cardboard. Uh, I'm going to do all, I'm going to cut all the vertical lines first and then all the horizontal, okay? So it goes faster. So I go like this and cut across, cut all the horizontal lines first. Okay, and then go, um, no, that was the vertical line. Now I'm going to go to the horizontal lines. Okay, and then you just peel them off like this. That's it. And that's basically how easy it is to do the first stencil. Now the second, uh, second stencil is going to be a little tougher because it has a lot of small little pieces, as you can see. Um, so um, when I'm all done, I'll be back. Now before you start painting, you need to prep the stock. You need to fill all the holes with pieces of paper so the paint doesn't go in. And for the magwell trigger area, I cut out a piece of cardboard that fitted in there. And also the um, cheek rest, same thing. Now for the action on the rubber butt pad, I used a 2 inch masking tape. I remove the bipod rail. And then uh, I fill all the uh, screw holes with pieces of paper. And then I fashioned a hook with coat hanger because I prefer to paint the primer and the base coat hanging up and down, straight vertically. Now you can do it horizontally, it's not a big deal, it's just it's a lot easier vertically. Now why am I using a primer? It's because I, well because digital camouflage takes a while to do and therefore I want it to last because primer sticks to the fiberglass better and the paint sticks to the primer better and it lasts longer so that's the reason why I'm using a primer it's, it's only another ten dollars okay now once that is all done clean it with solvent wear rubber gloves because you don't want to put the oil back onto the stock uh, there is a technique of how you spray okay never start from the stock and end on the stock always start off the stock in other words start about three inches back behind the buttstock and end about three inches in front of the handguard. Now you could go start from the back, go all the way past the handguard and then come back on a second sweep back to where you started from. Okay, um, that is the technique. And stay about 10 to 12 inches parallel to the stock. Um, I'll get that I'll get that done and I should be back it's been a week since I started spraying I did one application of primer gray three application of the base coat tan and each application I waited 24 hours now I'm ready to do the secondary colors the green and the dark brown and uh, I'll use uh, negative stencils for those now you have to get uh, prepare positive stencils and all that is a clean cup cut strips of masking tape. These are your positive stencils. I lined up uh, the stencils just to see where everything sits and this is good. Now I can just remove all the other ones and concentrate on the the green first. Now I decided on the green first is because it's a lighter color and the black will cover the green if, it, if there's any overlapping a lot easier. No, I put masking tape there because because I just wanted to do two of the larger patterns first. Now I line it up correctly and that's what the lines on the uh, brown uh, sheet of paper is for. Just to help me line it up correctly and it is about where I want it. Now to work on the on the uh, positive stencils I need a knife to help me put that on and yeah this is where I want it 
Now I'm going to do this. And this is probably where I want it to be, like right there. Now I'm going to overlap into the stencil, which will help. I'm just going to cut the excess off, and that is the positive stencil. Okay, I think it moved, so I'm just going to pull it back out again and straighten it out. Not a biggie. Just make sure it's lined up properly. Yeah, and that's about it. Okay. Now, I want to do another one over here. And I want to, I want to open that up a little bit over here. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a couple more over here and here. Okay, I'm ready to spray. Make sure all these uh, masking tape, which is the positive stencils, are pressed down. And I like to have the stock facing me, so I'm gonna be putting a um, I'm gonna raise the the back side up a bit, which you won't be able to see but actually let me move this up and show you what the thing looks like I'm just gonna be spraying these two so I'm gonna have a like a sheet of brown paper just so it doesn't cut a hole in it and it'll just focus on those in that area Put scotch tape so it doesn't go everywhere. Yeah, I'm just gonna do it like that. And let's put scotch tape like this. Now the area that the plastic is bulging, I would be pressing it down with my fingers like this. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can raise the back of the stock a bit more. That's it, because I like to have it yeah, as close to okay, so I'm all ready to spray. Shake the can and like I said, you want the stencil to be as close to the stock as possible. And um, And if it isn't, try to press it down. Okay, let's see where I could. There it is. I'm gonna shake the can. Now remember what I said. Start spraying off the target, and then go across. Okay. So that's what I did. I'm going to wait a couple of minutes <clears throat> before I apply another coat. I'm ready to take a look um, how it turned out and I have to be uh, careful because of the positive stencils that's there. So I have to slowly peel them up and there it is.
Oh, there it is. Okay, it looks pretty good. I'm quite happy of the edges, how sharp it is. Looks actually pretty good, as you can see. Uh, there's some glue stuck from the uh, masking tape that can be easily cleaned off. There's some there and there's some there. But as you can see, the edges are pretty sharp. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, blurriness over here, but otherwise, generally, it's pretty good. Well, so far, we have used three different types of stencils. Large pattern negative stencil, small pattern negative stencil, and a positive stencil made out of masking tape. Basically what that does is break up the edges of the large stencil and also to hold it down closer to the stock. Now we have come to the point where we have severe curves here, small area here where we cannot use these vinyl sheets anymore. So we have to make stencil out of masking tape. Now put two layers, one on top of the other, and then roughly use a pencil and make up a pattern. It's not that difficult, just make up a pattern. Now I'm going to cut it out, stick it on, and I'll come back. Vinyl negative stencils work great on large flat surfaces. It does not work too well on rough surfaces. So therefore, I'm forced to make negative stencils out of masking tape. But I still need to use this to copy the pattern onto the masking tape. Now before I mentioned that you know to stop the single layer of masking tape from ripping it's best to double up. Again it only works on flat surfaces. It does not work too well on rough surfaces. Doubling up makes it hard for the masking tape to go deep into the groove. So therefore I'm forced to only use one layer of masking tape. Well, it's the end of the second week and I've finished with the one side of the buttstock and I'm quite happy with the result. Uh, you're probably wondering why I just didn't buy the pre-made digital stencil which is a lot faster. Um, the reason why I didn't buy them is because uh, this stock has one third of this rough surface on the grip and the foregrip and those pre-made stencils do not work well with these rough surface. Matter of fact, the masking tape, which is more forgiving, uh, even then I had a little bit of a rough time because if I failed to push the masking tape into the groove, I would have some signs of leakage right there. Um, so therefore, uh, I didn't have a choice because of the way the stock is, I had to make my own stencils. I am finally done. This took a lot longer than I thought it would. And the reason why is because I'm very fussy. I wanted my edges to be nice and sharp and crisp. Uh, not just a flat surface, but also the rough textured surface. Um, so that required me to uh, do more of the uh, masking tape stencils, uh, negative stencils than I thought I would. I ended up uh, doing a lot of that and also correcting some of the blurriness that took some time too. Um, oh, also the light green paint. I ran out of light green paint, um, luckily towards the end. And so, but I have to look for, uh, it was really difficult looking for the dark green paint, but I did manage to find it. And I used that, a little bit of that to, um, just to highlight some areas, you know, just fill it in as a filler. And here, I'm gonna show you what it looks like before I put a matte clear coat on them, okay, and I'll put on the rifle to show it to you, but I want to show you before I do the clear coat. I think it looks awesome. Notice most of the edges are Nice and sharp, very crisp. Notice light green, there's some dark green in there. And uh, I'm gonna put a clear coat because I want this to last long because this took me so long. And then I'll mount on the rifle and I'll be back. Check this out. I finished with the clear coat 
and I'm so happy with the result. The clear coat makes these colors so vibrant. It makes the lighter green pop out better. At one point, I thought the light green was too light, but now I think it's perfect. This got to be one of the best digital camo on a rifle done by can spray on YouTube. It got to be. Look at that. It just looks so fantastic. And I must admit, at one point, I almost threw in the towel. I said this is just too much of work. But I'm glad I stuck it out. And look at this. I'm going to flip it uh, sideways and show you what's underneath. Nice, eh? Look at it. I'm going to show you the other side. And I'm going to put the uh, cheek rest on. I decided not to paint the cheek rest and just to leave it as the black. And let me flip it to the other side. Okay, this is the left side. And I'm going to show you what this looks like with the cheek rest on. And I'm just going to put it on right now. If I could line this up. And here it goes. Notice some uh, dark green. I sprinkled here and there. Doesn't this look fantastic? Oh, and about the clear coat, I put Two, co two coats within a few minutes from each other and then I put another coat an hour later and I waited 24 hours and I repeated that like five times. I almost emptied a brand new can of clear coat on this stock. So you can see I want this camo to last. One more thing, if you fashion a hook so you can hang up the stock, put a rubber band so it doesn't come apart and have the stock fall on you. So there you have it. Digital camo on a rifle stock. Thank you for joining me and please subscribe.